Oh, what's up? What's up? So when we say stay woke, who is saying stay woke? I've used it. Okay, really, I haven't because I feel like if I am using that term word, I'm trying to fit in somewhere. More woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we have to stay woke. Like everybody needs to be woke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can talk about if you're the wokest or woker, but just stay more woke than less woke. <laughs> yeah. So oh, we have to stay woke. And I've learned. Just be you, Kamala. So when you're talking about stay woke, woke, wokest, wokest, what? Then we trample on into your famous recipe for how to make greens. I have a friend who had a Christmas party, Christmas Eve every year, and she asked me to make the greens for a party every year. And I am not lying to you that I would make so many greens that I'd need to wash them in the bathtub. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. So how do you make your greens? Do you put turkey in them? Do you bacon. Put Nice. My grandma I do bacon. bacon. She put garlic. Vinegar. I put white vinegar. Yes. I do. So I start with I slice up my garlic. Uh -huh. But no, first I fry, chop up the, yeah, the bacon, bacon fry it. and get all that yeah. fat going. Uh -huh. Then I put garlic, yeah. some chili peppers, yes. and then a lot of water and yeah. so a little chicken stock. Okay. And I let it go for a while be before I put the greens in. <laughs> and then right so you get that going and all that flavor and then I put the greens in for a couple hours then I do vinegar and then I cheat and do a little Tabasco no that's okay yeah cause to, but Tabasco of all like I like Louisiana hot sauce but Tabasco has that right, right amount of vinegar yeah and I that so that's how I do my greens. I see why you get invited uh -huh. <laughs> VP Carmela Harris are you serious I think you are and because it's her recipe, the way she does things, the best that she knows how, and what has been given to her, passed down to her, I can respect that. That's her business. But it did throw me off. Out of all the greens I have watched through the years, through the generations before my time, I've never seen this go on in the bathtub. Now, maybe somebody has, but hey, I ain't going to knock it. And I understand how greens... You can have a bag, okay, that you that you have pre-washed, but you still gotta wash them. You can go pick your own greens. Um, yes, they do dwindle down to anything, so you gotta know the right measurements of what you're getting. And most of the time, black folk ain't measuring nothing. We going off of a feel. We going off of what we know, what we've seen. It's it's just embodied in us. So then to be questioning this woman's ethnicity. That seems like the only time when she doesn't overly laugh when that's coming into play and she don't play about that, which I don't blame her. I, mean I want to ask you about your opponent, Donald Trump. Okay. Um, I was a little bit surprised. People might be surprised to hear that you have never interacted with him, met him face to face. Mm -hmm. That's going to change soon. But what I want to ask you about is what he said last month. He suggested that you happened to turn black recently for political purposes mm -hmm. questioning a core part of your identity yeah any same old tired playbook next question please mm -hmm. <laughs> that's it that's it I mean, it's only so many times you can tell somebody it's only so it's only so many times somebody can actually look up what color is she where is she from what colors are dead what colors are mom just on and on that it just becomes so redundant but I do know being in California, that is a common question that seems to come up. I don't care. You can be the blackest of black. Blueberry, they still going to ask you, what are you mixed with? <laughs> and it's almost as if if you answer, I'm black. But, you know, there's so many people that is mis mixed up in California that it is a beautiful melting pot. But I have been around, oh my gosh, so many different ethnicities. And, and when it comes to food, let me just make this clear. The best sea sea seafood, Lord have mercy. The best soul food I have tasted was prepared by Mexicans. It was at this bowling alley. It was at this bowling alley, y'all. I didn't know they was gonna be serving soul food up in there, and it was Mexicans preparing it. Now, my homegirl, 
It was not black. It was not Mexican. She took me to a spot and she was like, oh, you're really gonna love this soul food spot. I didn't even ask for soul food that day, but it was all good. Cause I can cook it myself, basically. So it wasn't a big deal for me. So we go to this spot and um, I didn't, I, I wasn't really big on it. It was okay. So she felt, I think she could feel some type of way. Cause I was like, well, the greens is okay. What I didn't like about the greens, they didn't cook long enough. They weren't tender enough. The mac and cheese. Oh, I didn't get a chance to taste the mac and cheese. They said they sold out. No, y'all just didn't order enough. And y'all should have. So the cover up word is we sold out. And this is a business that has been in business for so many years. The place is actually legendary for LA. So they knew better. When you know better, do better. It ain't like y'all just op y'all been opened up for a year or even five years. The place was actually standing on legendary to say we sold out of that. But see, nowadays everybody is opening up a business. They taking the recipes from the, the aunties. And that's another thing when auntie, the word auntie was brought up to me, it became a trending cultural word for, for some because now where I'm originally from, I wasn't saying auntie, okay? I was always saying aunt, aunt this person, aunt this person. But when I would get around certain cousins of mine in the deep, deep, dirty South, they were always referencing auntie as auntie, 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 auntie. So I'm hearing it, I'm hearing it. And um, I started to pick it up as a young child. But at the end of the day, you know, they were trying to say, you ain't black if you don't say auntie. I'm black. I've said that plenty of times. But it's funny how these things can get caught up. But look, if the woman, Kamala, wants to laugh, just, just let her laugh. Because what can we do? What are we going to do? come to the screen and say, stop laughing, Kamala. We need to hear those policies. This is getting a little bit ridiculous. What are we going to say to former President Donald Trump? Oh, well, some of you black men, y'all um, was in prayer with him. But now you're saying some of y'all done switched it up, talking about you better back up Kamala. You ain't black if you don't. Okay, J Joe Biden used if you ain't black if you don't vote for him. So everybody just got to think for themselves, do what's best for them. And at the same time, I don't think we ever going to see a run like this ever again. Because she do kind of laugh a lot. But and then it kind of makes me laugh. Oh my gosh. And ain't no telling what's going to come out of Trump's mouth. It's just, it's, it's, it's serious. It is serious. Our future is serious. But I know who ultimately holds the future in their hands and the decisions that I make. But... We still need covering as far as we got to pray for our leaders that they be able bodied and they write minds. But at the end of the day, it's, it's getting to be, it already has gotten to be a lot, a lot more ways than one.